So I've been making a lot of vloggers recently, and I, I recently made one that is pretty cool. Now, it has a lot of logic on the back, which I will go over in a minute, but the cool thing about it is that it can go forwards just fine. That is standard walker behavior. But then I made it strafe. And I find that this really cool. It's kind of inspired by the Boston Dynamics dog, and it can just strafe left and right. You can strafe right here. It, it, yeah, strafe right, strafe left. And then it can also walk backwards at the same speed that it walks forwards. So the cool thing about this is that you get, like, a bonus maneuverability. And, like, before in walkers that I've made that couldn't walk backwards, if I was stood, like, right here, I would have to try and turn all the way around, which if I'm using a big walker, like, this might get pushed over the edge, kind of, like, that is close to. But, but using this one, uh, if I'm far enough back so that it won't do that, then I can just walk backwards, and I'll be fine. Like, you're no longer limited by only being able to walk in one direction in turn. So, whenever you take a step, three important things need to happen. There is some way that your foot has to lift up so you're not pushing against the ground, then your foot has to move forwards, and then down again, and then back again. I'm counting the down and back as one step, because it basically is, and it is on how I do my walkers. Because the down is usually faster than the back, so it's it just works out. And how we do this for walking forwards is we just bend the knee and ankle, and then we can just lift it up and then move it forwards, and that is what this green little logic circuit is doing. So basically, I thought of that, and I thought, how can we reuse that mechanic to go in any direction? And all you have to do is lift up the foot, like, which you can do with your own circuit, with its own circuit, and then move it in a direction that you want it to be moved in, kind of like how this is lifting up the foot, moving it, planting it, lifting up, moving it, planting it. And the back one is also following suit so it doesn't drag along the floor. Now, when I was thinking about this, I'm going to get a better angle for the sun. Um, I, I thought, what if you just used a logic gate for this? So I made two logic gates here, the ones in orange, and they both just connect to, like, this right here. Like, both of these, here, I'll set them to 1 and 2. And then, what that does is, it just, 1 would lift up the left foot. It does have a duration on this one, so it's gonna automatically put back down. And then 2 would lift up the right foot. And we can reuse that for any of the directions. So what I did with that is that I did just, like, some normal walker logic. Uh, I have... What is it? This one on W, and this one on W, and then two negative versions of that for the step back. I just like having that so that it steps, like, higher. The, the, the back step is, puts it at a little bit higher than the forward step would be, which allows you to not drag the feet against the ground as much. And that is just for, like, reversing the direction of this. That's why it's negative. And then what we have for that is just, like... That, that just kind of works out for forward. So we can walk like this, and it goes further forwards than it does back by a little bit, which allows kind of smooth walking like this. Now, I actually did the exact same thing for the backwards, except I did you reuse some of these gates, because I figured if I'm just having a positive on S for, like, triggering this, these pink gates are the inverted version of the orange gates, so when walking backwards we can bend the knee up in the opposite direction, which does make it a lot more stable. Uh, you can do it in the same direction, but then you get kind of get like this kick motion that is... It, it still works, but I don't like it as much, so I didn't use it for this one, because this one's a very robotical... Not robotic, I call it. It's a very robotic, analytical approach to it, where it's just, oh hey, we can make that motion for walking backwards, so we're going to. Most knees don't bend in both directions. But, on these ones, I can just kind of invert what I did for forwards on the backwards one. So how the strafing works is actually quite simple. So I have two logic gates that have buttons. One of them is negative, and one of them is positive. Wait, they're both positive, but this one runs into a negative one, so that I can control these hinges. So basically, these two alternate, but every other one would affect these hinges. So what I can do from that 
is make it step out and then kind of normally. And then I believe on this version, this one also affects hinges in some way. Yeah, yeah it does. These two also affect hinges in the opposite way because they're a positive logic gate. Meaning that we can lift up, which is what one of them is. The top one on the purple, well, the middle one on the purple, is to lift up the orange, which is why you can see the left orange activating. And then the right one is on the bottom logic gate, which brings the other foot back. So using that, you can kind of get this little strafe out of it. So that works great at this scale, but you can also scale it up some, although it will be more difficult to tune. Uh, here I'm going to build out a build that I'm working on with JC Arnt, and here I have to actually prepare it. And the walking forwards, I, I just put the same mechanism as that into this, and then we're, we've just been working on it. The, the walking forward works decently well. It's a little bit fast, but it's honestly fine. And then we have the Q and E are for like turning so you can move diagonally. And then A does a little strafe thing. I believe on this one I had to unbind the legs get closer thing and I just made it at zero degrees so that it wouldn't really collide with each other. But you can also go strafe to the left like so. And then this one uses a different kind of walking backwards, where it actually... It, it's a little bit glitchier, and we're still tuning it, but... It actually uses the plantigrade walking backwards. So, you can absolutely use this like that. And this is a semi-humanoid, and it works. So yeah, with most leg designs, you can actually make a function to go backwards. These ones don't have one, I just wanted to pull this out because it's a little modification of a walker I've made a while ago, but I made it bigger and more digitigrade legs, which is when the uh, it looks like the knee is going backwards, but it's just... It, it's basically just the ankle joint, it's fine. But yeah, this is, this is walking decently smooth too. So, I, I, I do think that I'm getting a little bit better at making walkers, but I am really happy about making one that can walk in all directions. And then I can just reuse this logic for other walkers, and, like, I'll have to tune it to, like, the timings and speed and stuff, and, like, I'll have to add different suspension to the legs, like we did the king. But, honestly, I, I think that this is really cool. Uh, feel free to use any of this for, like, your own builds. I, I would love to see some more walkers that aren't just limited to forward. And this this definitely isn't the first walker that can move like this, but, you know, I, I haven't seen too many others that can strafe and walk backwards and turn. The turning is just driver-based. I could make the turning step-based. I'd have made a walker like that before, but for this, for the sake of this, I didn't super want to. And I'm sure that with two of these, you could just programming it it to be like the Boston Dynamics dog. And you know what, I'm gonna do exactly that because I thought that it was a good idea. I'm gonna have to space these out a little bit more, but I have alternated the back leg walking with the front leg walking. Uh, it's still too much. Um, uh, yeah, I've alternated the back leg walking with the front leg walking, so I just did that by reversing the timing on the logic gate, so like, the I swapped which one was the delayed one for forwards, but now we can also go, we can press Q for going like this, and I want to remove the gyros from it, because theoretically if the front one strafes right and the back one strafes left, we should turn. I'm actually going to do that with my own, not with it, my own, with it, it, their own logic gates for that. So I'm going to have this one be set to going right on D. Uh, yeah, there's still two seats. Um, can I remove one of those? And just make this, like, a block? Because if I can just remove one of those, I'll, I think that that'll work out best. I can, that's neat. Sometimes it unbinds the stuff that the first th seat was bound to, and sometimes it, like, rebinds stuff that hadn't previously bound. Like that! Like all of that stuff that hadn't previously be bound, been bound. Okay, so we're, just, we're going to select all of these, unbind, unbind, select all of these because 
they, I don't know why they bound. Because the seat that they were unbound to got deleted, they instantly regained all of their controls, and it's honestly kind of annoying, because, like, I went to go switch the seat out for a more durable seat in a different build, and I would have had to, like, reprogram everything, so I just didn't, because I, I didn't want to. But anyways, uh, I can hook this up to be... Okay, so it's on right, so I need to trigger the right gates for the front, and the left gates for the back. What happens if I press it now? Oh, that is working better than I could have imagined. Oh, that's great. Okay, now we have to make one for left. I'm gonna make it in the same fashion. So I'm just gonna grab a new XOR gate because I don't feel like unwiring that one. Setting this to A, still positive because I we need to put a positive input into the gates. And A is going to be right on the back ones and left on the front ones. Um, right there and there. Not that. That. Okay. So we can go left. We can go forwards. This is not as smooth as the Boston Dynamics dog, but you know what? It's it's pretty good. And we can turn right. This is honestly one of my favorite turning systems I've ever put in a mech. Okay, let's let's remove where the logic is for demonstration. So, like, all of this logic is here as a demonstration, and it's kind of bulky. So, we're going to move this to here. Now, these panels are going to go on the side now. Of course, I built this out of something that is not... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swap this out for actual blocks. And realistically, we could probably have reused some of the logic, but that would have been a lot more complicated. So, now we can just walk forwards... I can turn in place, which is really cool, in my opinion. I can I can go ahead and strafe, which not how I would have done the strafing if I didn't have gyros, but it's honestly not too bad. Uh, what happens if I do remove the gyros from this? And by remove, I mean set them to a hotkey I can press. Okay, so I'm going to toggle them off. Oh, that is... Um, I did not balance this correctly for that, or, like, do anything with the legs properly for balancing that. This is meant to be a staple bipede, which means two legs. Uh, yeah, this is not too bad. And then I can strafe. Yeah, I, I really like this system. Uh, I, I do hope that you enjoyed watching this and me figuring out how to build this, and I hope you enjoyed in general. Have a good day, and see ya!